i runga i te ingao o te atua, o te matua me te tama me te wairua tapu. Amine. The Lord be with you. Hari mai ki tēnā karakia, hari mai i runga i te aroha. A very warm welcome to this Christ College Chapel service. Uh, we're in lockdown during week five of our term, and I hope that you've been managing as best that you can, and I hope that this can also be part of encouraging you. Uh, Christians of different groupings, Christians of different denominations may disagree about lots of things, uh, but amazingly there's an agreement about the way that we read through important parts of the Bible uh, Sunday by Sunday and the great feast days um, during a three-year cycle. Uh, so each Sunday there's an Old Testament, a First Testament, a Hebrew Bible reading, uh, there's a psalm, and there's a New Testament reading and a Gospel reading. So this Sunday, for example, if you go to a Roman Catholic uh, service in Spanish in South America, uh, you get exactly the same Gospel reading as you would in a Methodist church in the United States of America, or an Anglican church in the middle of Africa, or a Presbyterian church in the islands, and so on. We're all reading the same Gospel reading, and that Gospel reading for this Sunday is now being read by our head prefect, Jack Belcher. Reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And there are also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesies rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written. This people honours me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be so, to God. We all know that washing hands and sanitizers and masks and uh, the vaccine, these are all uh, central parts of our lives nowadays. We're in the middle of a pandemic all around the world. During this pandemic, which we're all experiencing, we're all reading the same reading uh, where Jesus seems to be saying, don't worry about washing your hands. It's, it's not important. I I'm stressing that's what he seems to be saying, which is an odd thing for Jesus to be saying to us in this reading in the middle of a pandemic. So let's clear one thing. When Jesus says there's nothing outside a person that by going in can defile you, He's not talking about germs or viruses. Jesus didn't know about germs. He didn't know about viruses. Uh, there is something that we can all agree on, uh, whether you're a Christian or an atheist or belong to another religion. I hope we can all agree Jesus was fully human. He was 100% human. He wasn't pretending to be human. So, for example, he didn't know English. Uh, Jesus couldn't do calculus. And he didn't know about viruses, and he didn't know about vaccines. The early church, the early Christians, when they were uh, hearing this teaching that uh, some people were teaching that Jesus is God pretending to be human, a bit like 
uh, Clark Kent and Superman, uh, they called this docetism, uh, that Jesus is pretending to be human. Um, they condemned that teaching. They strongly condemned that as a docetism as a false teaching. Jesus is fully human. I also happen to believe that Jesus, as well as being fully human, Jesus is fully human. We all agree on that. I also believe that Jesus is fully God. But when I say that sentence, Jesus is fully God, it says a lot about what I mean by the word God. Uh, we see a lot of teachings around that give the wrong impression about Jesus and about Christianity. I see it uh, in different places, including on Twitter. On Twitter, I saw, if your pastor is telling you that Jesus would get the jab, find yourself a new pastor. And as you go down that thread, there's a response that says Jesus wouldn't need the jab. Well, let's be clear. Jesus got sick. Jesus was tired. Jesus used to feel hungry. And in the end, Jesus died. None of that was pretending. Jesus didn't pretend to do those things. So yes, Jesus today could and possibly would catch COVID-19. And I'm convinced Jesus would get the jab. I got my first vaccine a week ago. Uh, some of you may have seen my before the vaccine photo and been able to compare that with the photo of me after receiving the vaccine. And those of you who don't know my sense of humor can now go off and add to the Jesus wouldn't get the jab conspiracy nutters. And we can get back to our story of Jesus seeming to say you don't need to wash your hands. So let's think about washing your hands. Washing your hands is a ritual that's part of the three great desert religions. The three great desert religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. They're also the three great monotheistic religions. Muslims and Jews wash their hands before praying. And you might have seen me washing my hands before I pray the prayer that blesses the bread and the wine. That's called the lavabo, and it's part of that. Uh, desert tradition of washing hands before saying an important prayer. So washing is a common religious ritual. What Jesus is stressing is that doing the ritual doesn't change your heart. Uh, let's think of this slightly differently. We know that rugby players play on a rugby field, but Jesus is saying these things don't work the other way around. Playing on a rugby field doesn't make you a rugby player. Even playing with a ball on a rugby field doesn't make you a rugby player. Jesus is saying people of faith might do certain rituals, but doing those rituals doesn't make you a person of faith. A priest friend of mine, the Reverend Sarah West, during lockdown, she's decided that from now on she's going to make a lino cut piece of art each week connected to our agreed gospel reading. And I think in this image, she has caught the essence of today's reading perfectly. Jesus wants us to clean our hearts, not just our hands. So lockdown can be an invitation to look at our hearts some more. Look at what's happening in your heart. If you're bored, why are you bored? What can you learn from being bored? Is there anything wrong with feeling bored? If you're annoyed with someone, maybe someone in your household, why are you annoyed with this person? And, and don't just respond with, oh, because that person is annoying. What do you miss in lockdown? And and what are you surprised that you can do without? So how after lockdown, how might we change? What do you find you're valuing more? What after lockdown might you do differently? I saw another message about our response to lockdown. We can respond 
with fear, we can respond with learning, and we can respond with growth. So, be gentle with yourself, and be gentle with others. All of us find difficulties and stresses and anxieties at this time, and Jesus would too if he were here. I believe, in fact, that Jesus is here, and we can certainly try to be more Jesus for each other. We might be surprised how our hearts have grown during this time, if we will let them be cleansed, if we will let our hearts be cleaned, just as we clean our hands. And now Jamie Barr, the Deputy Head Prefect, will lead the prayers. Caring God, we thank you for your gifts in creation, for our world, for our land, its beauty and resources, for the rich heritage we enjoy. We pray for those who make decisions about the resources of the earth, that we may use your gifts responsibly. For those who work on the land and sea, in city and in industry, that all may enjoy the fruits of their labours and marvel at your creation. For artists, scientists and visionaries, that through their work we may see creation afresh. God of love, we thank you for giving us life, for all who enrich our experience. We pray for all who mourn, for all who struggle at this time, for all who are affected by COVID-19, for those in politics, medical science, social and relief work, for those who make decisions affecting the lives of others, for all who seek to bring life to others. God of love, we thank you that you have called us to celebrate your creation. Give us reverence for life in your world. We pray for those affected by the earthquake in Haiti, for the people of Afghanistan. Finally, we pray for our college community. God of love, in darkness and in light, in trouble and in joy, Help us, Heavenly Father, to trust your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let us conclude. The blessing of God, the eternal goodwill of God, the shalom of God, the wildness and the warmth of God be among us and between us, and the blessing of God, our Creator, Redeemer, and Giver of life be with you this day and for evermore. Amen. Haere i runge i te rangamarie, i runge i te aroha me te nako hihiko, ki te mahi, ki te ariki. Go now to love and serve the Lord. Go in peace. Amen. We go in the name of Christ. <laughs>